Hey guys, welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be talking to you now about 9.3 Chemical Equilibrium. Now, take a look at this reaction here. We have some products, or pardon me, we have some reactants and some products. And we have this arrow system that we talked about in a previous video called, before I didn't define it as what it is, I just said it, was, it meant the reaction was reversible. It can go to the right, it can go back to the left. What those arrows are called are equilibrium arrows. Now, equilibrium is one of the more important concepts in chemistry. What you have is you have a reaction going to the right and then going back to the left at the same time at the same rate. Okay. Now, equilibrium implies the word equal, of course. So what is equal? Well, what is equal is the rate of the forward reaction and the backward reaction. It's the rates of the reaction that are equal. The concentrations on either side of the arrow may or probably aren't equal. It's the rates of the reaction that are equal. So as products move to the right, or products get formed going to the right, they go back to the left at the same rate. So if I have you know, one product molecule being made, I have a bunch of uh, starting materials going back. It's just, it's at the same time, at the same rate. And in equilibrium, concentrations on the left and on the right don't change. At equilibrium, concentrations on the left and concentrations on the right don't change. At equilibrium, concentrations on the left and concentrations on the right of the equilibrium arrow do not change. The rates are equal. The rates of product formation and starting material formation are the same. And that's equilibrium. It's a very difficult concept, actually, but that's in a nutshell what it is. Le Chatelier's principle. Now, let me get my face out of the way there. Okay. According to Le Chatelier's principle, putting quote unquote stress to the equilibrium will cause the rate of the forward or reverse reaction to change to offset the quote unquote stress and regain equilibrium. So remember what it takes to have a chemical reaction. Just remember what it takes. Collisions, orientation, and speed, right? Reactants have to hit, have to hit each other in a certain way with enough energy. So think about collisions. Let's say, let's just take a very simple reaction. A plus B gives me C. And that reaction is reversible. Okay. Now let me, let me put it over here. Make a little more room. A plus B is an equilibrium with C plus D. Now, this reaction is in equilibrium. That means as fast as C and D are made, A and B are made. This reaction is going back and forth. Now, what would happen if I removed A? If I just took A out of the reaction, just snatched it. No more A in reaction. Well, then the formation of C and D would stop, right? Because A and B have to collide for C and D to form. Make sense? Right? A and B must collide for C and D to form. If I remove A, just remove it, take it out. It's out of the reaction. There's no possible way A can collide with B. But the reaction of C and D marches on. Because C and D don't know that A is not there, and they don't care. They don't know. They're not thinking. They're just reacting, right? So if A is removed from this reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the left towards starting materials or, or reactants. Why? Because C and D are still reacting. They're still there right? The fact that A is gone does not matter at all to C and D. Now, what's going to happen as the reaction goes to the left? Well, the concentration of A is going to increase again. It's going to start going up. Why will it go up, you might ask? Well, because C and D are making it. They're actually producing it in the reaction, right? As the levels of A rise, equilibrium will be reestablished because now A is being is now A is back in the reaction. It's been made by C and D. Okay? Let's try another idea. Let's say instead of taking A out, 
I add a bunch more. Add a ton. Just add a bunch. A whole bunch of A. Well, what's going to happen when I add a bunch of A? Well, more collisions will occur with B. Because there's so much A, they can't help but hit a B. The collisions are going to happen more often, so the rate of the reaction going to the right should increase dramatically. Okay? Now, remember, C and D are, are always reacting this way. They're always doing it. But now that we've added more A, the reaction this way happens a lot faster. So we should get a buildup of C and D until they get their concentration high enough where they react backwards at the same rate. This is equilibrium. This is Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? What would happen if I took out D? If I removed it from the reaction? The equilibrium goes to the right because there's no D to react with C. What would happen if I added more B? The reaction would shift to the right because B and A are reacting more often now. That's Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? Add to this side, reaction shifts this way. Add to this side, reaction shifts that way. Okay? Now, what about removing? If I remove stuff from this side, the reaction shifts that way. So if you remove a starting material, products form starting material. It goes backwards. Okay? If I remove one of these, the reaction goes that way. Okay? If you add more, the reaction runs away. If you take some out, reaction runs towards. If you want to think of it that way. However you want to think about it is fine, as long as you remember it. Because uh, equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle is very important for understanding um, a lot of things, actually. Okay? All right. Now, that is the end of 9.3. So let's, uh, the video is pretty short, so let's continue right into 9.4. Conjugate acids and bases. Now, it's a very simple idea. It's a very simple idea. Uh, and students make this way too complicated. It's really simple. Let's take a very simple acid-base reaction. HCl plus water. Let me move my, my, my face up here a little higher. Plus water will give me hydronium plus chloride. Okay? Now, everyone, I hope, would say this is the acid and that's the base. We've covered this before. Now, a conjugate acid, a conjugate acid is the product that's formed. Okay? It's it's the, whoever took the proton. So in this reaction, oops, this is a conjugate acid. And this is a conjugate base. Okay? Now here's how I want you can think about it to remember it. The conjugate acid, the conjugate acid comes from the base. The conjugate acid comes from the base. And the conjugate base comes from the acid. Okay? Acid on the left, conjugate base on the right. Base on the left, conjugate acid on the right. Acid on the left, base on conjugate base on the right. Base on the left, conjugate acid on the right. Okay? That's how it works. So, let's take a let's back out of all of this. Let's take a look at this uh, weak acid on the bottom here delete all that stuff. It's just a little bit cluttery, that's all. There we go. So now, let's see if we can figure out which one of these is the acid. Well, water has two protons on the left. H3O plus is on the right. Okay. This acetic acid has a hydrogen right there, and that hydrogen seems to be missing here. Seems to be missing here. So going from this side 
to this side, this entity has lost a hydrogen, lost a proton. So this must be an acid, and this must be a conjugate base. This must be a base, and here the water has gained another proton, right? Right there, see it, see the three? So this must be the conjugate acid. If you're an acid on the left, conjugate base on the right. Base on the left, conjugate acid on the right. And that's exactly how it works. And that's all there is to know about that, just the definitions. Acid gives you the conjugate base. The base becomes the conjugate acid. And that's it for that. That's 9.4. We'll stop here and we'll pick it up in 9.5 pH and the pH scale. All right, guys. So I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.